Saddled up for the Deep Beast Encounters podcast. Get ready for a ride in the deep. Josh and our special guest today, Cody Killian with KAMS, dude. K- What's up, dude? So, how are y'all? Same shit, dude. Thanks for coming on. Hey, uh-huh. I appreciate y'all, man. It's, uh, yeah. I dig, I dig what y'all are doing here. And oh, Josh gave me a message out of the blue, and it was weird. I felt like fangirl or whatever, but <laughs> I was actually watching your last podcast, and he messaged me. And yeah, he like, sent me a screenshot of it. Moment. Yeah, so uh, after uh, after that last one, uh, you, you very well could be the last guest, because it's after okay. Little Bill, we might get canceled. It's okay. If if might was a word, for sure is now, so it, it works. Hell yeah, dude. But no, yeah. I sent him a little screenshot, because I didn't want to be like, oh, I'm listening to your stuff right now. And no, so, yeah, but no, I, I appreciate it, man. Hell yeah. yeah it it yeah, means dude. a lot to me. No, so. that's what it's all about, is this, you know. East, just people in East Texas, dude. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, we're trying to get crackheads on. I just don't trust them. Hi, my name is Cody, and I have a problem. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, we're going to get some homeless guys pretty soon. Oh, I can hook you up. You got, yeah. you got some. I want, like, a weird one, dude. Like, we'll do drugs, but you can handle them just fine and, like, watch them, you know, get I, geetered out, dude. Well, yeah. Um, and ask them fucked up questions about You life. do live here, and you're... Um, Super easy to Your find motto them. for this show is very tempting. You just take the broken dreams out of it, and you'll have them lining up at the door. I bet you know a certain someone that would probably come on for the first time. Who? I hear she's a real five-star person. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. That chick, I wouldn't have anything left, dude. Oh, she go to yeah. the bathroom, dude. Next thing you know, all these office doors will be open. Oh, shit probably. Be missing, dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we got to worry about all of this shit here. Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. I should get some of these uh, paintings appraised, and then if they happen to come up missing. You know what the great get thing about is. paintings and art is? It is the number one way that t- rich people write off all their money. Mm-hmm. Like that crow behind you, that's a $100,000 piece. Yep. You don't believe me? Write me a receipt for it, and yeah, I'll prove no, that's it. How, I, I can <laughs> gift up, this is my LLC, I think just art, I could gift up to $3,000 for a tax write-off. Shit's crazy. But no, you get them appraised, yeah. you know, as whatever. Because, I mean, you see a bunch of crap, and it's just, you know, oh, this is a $3 million, why? It's just a guy who was, like, really fucked up on drugs. He splattered some paint here and there, rubbed his dick all over it. Dude, there's people who are painting with their own shit and blood, and oh, they're selling yeah. their stuff for millions. Yeah, that's, that's like this, who are these people? It's like this Banksy guy. You know, he was a graffiti artist, and he sold this painting at this auction of a little girl with a balloon mm-hmm. that I'm pretty sure you, my daughter could have done, or, you know. And once it sold and hit the gavel, it shredded. And then it sold for, I think, three or four times more what? before yeah. it went through the shredder. So yeah. the thing about Banksy, though, is some of, his, some of his stencils are so complicated yeah. that people don't understand how he's making these stencils. Because they're like, this he's not cutting these by hand. Right. Is this a laser machine? Because they're so crazy. Um, and no one can figure it out. And uh, uh, for the longest time, this guy, I think if, if I've read this correctly, uh, I read this a long time ago, but... He's looking uh, up over like seventy eight felonies for putting up graffiti, dude. Do they, they, under the name of Banks. Do they know who he is yet? I think he finally came out and was like, "Fuck it, what are they gonna do?" Yeah, you know what he's, I mean. He has enough money by right. now to buy. I'm out of sure, anything. dude. But yeah, he's one of the best, dude. Yeah. One of the best well, graffiti know, artists out there. So like, obey, same guy. Yeah, that really? shepherd dude. Did not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a fucking big time uh, graffiti artist. Uh, he would do Andre the Giant's face. That's what the obey face. Yeah. Was. And, he eventually put it on a shirt, and then Bam. all of a sudden, when you start paying all those taxes, yeah. you're no longer a criminal. It's like, well, we'll, we'll let that slide. That's right. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, speaking of criminals and rich people being those things, um, so, like, they have warehouses that are in these port towns that are vaults. And you can look this up. And what they do is is they buy all these high-piece art, you know, high-priced art, and they put them on a boat, and they take them to these port authorities with these vaults on them 
and then they can't be taxed for those paintings, but they can write off the expense of buying these paintings. So you've got, you know, like stacks of Van Goghs and Picassos and Da Vinci's that are sitting in a vault that nobody will ever see because I sold you a piece of canvas and I said it was worth a hundred million and you said yes it was because I wrote off the you know what it cost you wrote off the expense damn right dude well speaking of art dude um why don't you when you can bring out some of the uh stuff that uh you make okay is it business or hobby um, or both very much so would love to be a business but my wife and children very much so love to eat mm-hmm. and they value up things like electricity and phone service and all that silly stuff so but it's um what what it started out is is you know I, I grew up poor um not poor some not as rich as most if i wanted something especially into my teens and in the early 20s i either had to buy it broke and fix it or i had to build it um, I, about, about 26 or so, I, I mean, I've been, I bought my first guitar for myself and my daughter on my first father's day after I had my daughter. Uh, she's 13 now. Jesus. And, yeah. Boys eight. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But anyways, so started playing, um, had a real, real complicated situation at that time. And then I uh, was fortunate enough to get out of that situation and got my kids and, you know, got custody and all that. And um, a few years before that, I was in Mena, Arkansas, and there was a 1954 5F4 Super. And it's a Fender amp. They wanted $8,000 for it, and it didn't work. I told the dude he was crazy, looked it up, and he was about 2,000 shy of what it was worth, you know, as far as the condition was. And there's no way I'm going to have eight grand to throw on something that I'm going to sit in a corner and play when nobody's around. Right, you know? right, right. Mm-hmm. So I looked into Leo Fender. You know, Leo Fender did not play an instrument. Hmm. He is probably one of the biggest innovators of music. I mean, you see a Telecaster. You, uh, Jimi Hendrix used a Stratocaster, mm-hmm. okay? He didn't play music, but he built amplifiers. He started out as a radio tech, went into the military, did that, got out, couldn't, got fired from four different jobs, and started turning radios into guitar amps. And I think, he, I think he's done okay. You know, yeah, hell yeah. yeah. I think but, his family uh, will eat for as long as electricity around. So I, I looked uh I looked up what he read, you know, and he bought the Cervanian tube manual and he got the RCA tube manual with an R C radio that he bought. And he started flipping pages. So I started flipping the same pages. And uh, after much electrocution and several, you know, trials and errors, I kind of put together my own stuff and so you're right one of the probably the few dude, that actually can make old school amplifiers uh, uh, uh there's a lot of people out there and there's a dang sure a lot better than me but uh, it, it's a dying art i mean you know to I, I go to like all these antique shops downtown i go in there and i see an old box television you know with the speakers I'll buy it for a couple hundred bucks or, you know, even less. Bring it in the back of my truck. I pull up to the house. My wife is going, what are you doing with that? I said, don't worry. We're going to burn most of it. I needed these four pieces out of it, you right, know? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, I do vintage repair. I do assur- insurance appraisals on old vintage gear. Um, I, you know, repair anything I can get my hands on. But building them is my, that's my thing. Uh, and I you know there's a lot of guys out there you can go on the internet right now and you can buy a kit and it'll give you you know it's like watercolor you know color watercolors you know this piece is on part one yeah yeah that you know I started out there um but I I never built an actual kit yeah um I bought a cheap amp and um I caught it on fire about six times. <laughs> got it right. Got it right. Number seven. 
Um, and I call it my lucky seven, but I then started to develop my own circuits. And what I do is, is I take my amps in respect to those that come before. And like, so for instance, one I'm going to show you here in a minute, it's, um, takes all the cleans of a Marshall. Uh, so think like, um, castles made of sand. Okay. Jimi Hendrix, real clean, real crisp. It's all the cleans of a Marshall, but all the dirt and growl of a fender. And usually it's opposite. People want that Marshall raw, you know, and the clean crisp of a fender. I don't like a clean fender. It's just, it's, it's not, it's not my, my ear, right. you know, and, uh, I put them together and see where we go. And then, uh, I got another one over here. It's, um, you know, it's got, it's a box ish type deal. Now it's two channel. It's one side's one thing, one side's the other. Um, the second side, it's the original Vox AC 15. I'm sorry for all you people that are not gear nerds, but, um, Give you some reading material. Reading is always good, but it's yeah. I don't read so. Good. Yeah, so the Beatles. Mm -hmm. Okay, I read Calvin Hobbes. Okay, I read you know Charles Bukowski. So. Uh, no, I can't. I spell read Hustler. That. I can't spell I it like either. Her. Yeah, so, I just look at the pictures. Uh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I mean, like the Beatles. Okay, um, the original "Love Me Do" and and all that. That is what the second side sounds like. Mm -hmm. The first side. Um, it, you know, it's more of um, like a Peter Green, the original Fleetwood Mac, um, you know, or Ted Nugent. That would oh, yeah. early, early years, not later. Right. So, and I mean, my deal was is I, I just, I, I, I needed a place to put my mind for a while. And, uh, yeah, an outlet. That's what I did, man. So, and you just didn't stop. It, no, I don't. I have a very bad uh, addictive personality, and these days I tend to use those addictions for positive, cleaner, less hectic things. Amen, dude. Hell yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, I got, um, I, I built a, I, so every amp that I build, I try to build a matching guitar for it. Um, there's one set that I won't let go, and that's my, my twill. It's the real tweed, and then my, my camp caster. And I, we'll look at those in a little bit, but I won't sell those. I mean, I will if you got the money, honey. I got the time, but yeah, it's right, a it's dude. a lot mm -hmm. less. It's sentimental value price. Yeah, yeah that was my first. You know, hey, someone asked me to buy my truck the other day. How much you want for that truck? I was like twenty grand. I let you have. They're like, you're fucking crazy. I was like, I love that truck. Yeah, but you know, I, I had a. There's a guy um, used to be a pretty pretty accomplished musician around here. He he played my 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 Telecaster in a bar one night. And, uh, I, you know, I'm up there. I'm up his ass. Is it doing good? Is it okay? Is it working right? He came off stage during break, and he brought three grand out of his pocket and offered it to me. Hmm. Told him I was like, and, and be honest with you, it's worth way less than that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I told him, I was like, man, you put another three on top of it, you can have it. Or I could build you one for three, you know. And then, you know, the pair there, I've had a couple, several people ask me, you know, what for the pair, I think. Ten grand, you can have it all, or I can build you one for about you know five. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just that that those. It's what I do, man. That's cool though, man. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And, and there's something about you know like the vintage looks too. There's like make it fucking dope. Dude. Yeah. It really matches this room a lot, dude. Well, yeah, I like it for you know it'd be. We, a, we try to get a little something from every uh, character <laughs> coming on. So how about you just give us a little one? Oh, yeah, that's, that, <laughs> yeah. there's not a problem. It's a one-time low payment. Depending on low, depends on your budget. But um, yeah, you can we can do that. Oh uh, yeah. No, I mean, so I've got uh, I've got two two different ones here. One's uh, one sits on top of the other. It's a stack, and then I got a combo. I got 24 bucks. How's that? You can play it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, the I, I think I've got four of the stacks out there in the world, and I've got uh, three, five of the combos out there that I, I built for people. And um, How many guitars do you have out there? Uh, one, two, I've got six. Nice. Yeah, now... What my main gig on the guitars is, 
is so way I started. So matter of fact, I, I have another guitar that I, I didn't bring because I didn't build it. Um, but found a guitar in the trunk of a wrecked car. It had been rear-ended. I was at a junkyard here in town. Opened up the trunk. I was looking for a part, and there was this guitar. Body was smashed. Neck was great. I ordered a piece of wood, started carving, put it together. I can't call it mine because it's got, you know, somebody else's neck on it, but right. that's very, very well branded, you know. Um, but for my guitars, I have, you know, like I said, I, I've always built my stuff. So when I started out, I started going to pawn shops and buying cheap guitars. You know, I, I have absolutely no problem making good off crackheads misfortunes yeah right dude. all my tools everything no, and, t- and, and tax money's coming in so palm shops are about to be popped oh so man dude. i'm telling you you hit it uh, for <laughs> real you catch it in the first of march the end of april and then all through may june and july and it's oh yeah and especially the uh, june and july the end of it dude that's oh, yeah. when tax money gone dude yeah and then uh you know what i mean people got pawn their shit because right. you know what i mean they're living you know what i'm saying yeah. a certain all kind that of shit rich. they bought oh, yeah and, and, living yeah. a certain kind of rich for a few months dude. all them big screen tv shit you can get some good car rims dude Shoot. Yeah. and like in tyler oh yeah you know they got construction going everywhere in tyler so what i've done is i like i'm building a house right now almost done thank god but um i've found the pawn shops nearest to those job sites brand new air gun <laughs> you know, brand new framing yeah. gun brand new brad Naylor. and you know damn well dude it wasn't the employees nope. fucking pawning them somebody went on there to, and i feel yeah, bad yeah. for them but that's what insurance is for damn but man. i need to break so oh yeah and then like uh the guitar stores across the street there or the pawn shops across the street from the guitar store they don't want to buy it. They take it across the street and they'll give it to somebody else, you know. Amen. But tear them apart, put, you know, cheap, not take all the cheap stuff out of it and then put good electronics in it. If I don't, if I don't build the pickups myself, you know, I'll, I'll get some good ones and throw them in there. And that, that that's, I basically did guitar repair and guitar customization to build the funds up to start building amps. Yeah. And, um, I mean, that's, and then right before COVID hit, you know, I was making pretty good progress and everybody blames everything on COVID. So I'm going to jump on that train, but (laughs) I had a deal with a guitar store. They wanted 10 amps. They were going to buy three and then three and then four at the end. And it was, they were, I get a certain percentage up front, and then they were going to pay me a commission off each one. Hell yeah! I got two of them done, and then I got a call and said, "Hey, brother, the world is shutting down. Um, I don't need those amps." And I was like, "Why?" Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> and but anyways, so you know, I, I took what parts I had and built them, and you know, I've got a. There's a preacher here in town. I built him a little small one. It's actually called the Preacher. I wonder if he plays Slayer on it. Um, <laughs> he can. It does have a, a wicked drive in it. He likes to play uh, Black Sabbath a lot. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I did. Uh, yeah. What was that one song? Uh, I think they have a Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. Well, yeah. you, you do know, and I, I'd have to get my phone to look up and get the exact name, but Black Sabbath has one of the first Christian rock songs ever yeah, that's what's funny about metal dude a lot of people like it's devil worship i'm like man you really have got to pay attention tony you know? iomi their guitar player and the drummer were were they they were faith you know faith believe they were christians you know and uh, yeah the drummer wrote and if you look up you hear it and you're like you know ozzy and his voice but then you read the lyrics and you're almost oh that's it's, right, it's awesome you know yeah so it's just the way it's delivered that scares a lot of people. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of people are scared by the way we deliver ourselves, and that's where we separate the weak from the strong. Well, that's like faith, dude. It's like, I think the West has destroyed Christianity in that aspect. Uh, you know, Jesus hung out. Well, basically today what Jesus will be hanging out would be with murderers, drug dealers, and hookers. Oh, without question. Mm-hmm. I, mean, so, uh, I mean, Jesus is pretty cool. Man. You look at the, the Bible and, like, Paul, you yeah. know, and all that, and, you know, all of that. Moses was a murderer. Paul, yeah, Mo- Paul killed people for fun 
Yeah, Christians. Yeah, Christians yeah. for fun. Dude, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I yeah. mean, and that you know that I completely agree with you. One thousand because you don't. Yeah, Jesus wasn't a pacifist either. Dude. You he don't go in churches and flip tables oh, because they were selling you know like relics. You know what I'm saying? Getting making money. You know what I'm saying off the Lord. Yeah, they don't do that. Yeah, no, and, and you know it's it's crazy to me, but you know you you find you save the flock. By walking amongst the wolves. That's right. Dude. You know. Well, that's that's the best thing. God needs his wolves too. But you know, and, but we're always shamed. But when the shit comes to a, to a head, you know, we're the ones you want to call. That's right. Uh, just like what was that old man in that church, dude, who aced that son of a bitch, dude? Hey, just dude, headshot wow. from what twenty five feet? Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, that's yeah, fucking that. crazy, dude. Did you hear about? It was a couple years ago about that. I think he was twenty or twenty one. About no twenty one or twenty two. Guy walks into a mall. Oh yeah. With it, I think it was a it was an AK. Yeah. And this dude's eat this kid's eating lunch with his girlfriend, and what was it? Forty yards. Yeah, I think it was a uh, forty-five, and it was fucking just pat pat and yeah, dropping across the whole fucking mall. Yeah. The other side with a fucking pistol. Yeah, like pe- people are all bitch. sitting yeah. and eating, and he just. Whoop, whoop, Hey, that's John Wicker yeah. right there. In real oh, life. dude, just yeah. sits down and eats his Good lunch for him, for dude. Yeah, that's You know, hell yeah, sit down and finish your meal. Yeah. You know you're, this is the last meal you're going to eat for at least three days. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're going, You're dude. going to jail. Yeah. You're, you're going to jail. You're going to get out, but, you know, due process. Yeah, yeah that, but, I mean, like, people are fucking, like, you know, running, running and, and shit. And he through the people. Shit. Fucking. Hey, that's, and that's what they say yeah. is they always keep calm. And you, and you know, know what my favorite thing about that guy was? When the police showed up and they went to question him. He only said one word. Lawyer. Lawyer. Oh, yeah. You're ever in a situation, sir, do you need a drink of water? Lawyer. Do you need to go to the bathroom? Lawyer. How is your day today? Ask my lawyer. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Basically, right now, I'm fucking pleading the fifth. So yeah. Fuck off. No, I ain't even going to tell him that. My lawyer tells me that when I get here. And dude, I don't know. Maybe y'all have it, but I've been in some rooms before. And it's that like, well, we already know. And I'm like, I'm going to stop you right there. Because if you knew, I wouldn't be sitting in this room right here. I'd be sitting in that fucking cell back That's there. That's right. So we can either fuck off, you put me back in my cell, or let me go. Yep. Because you don't sit in these rooms if you nope. already know, dude. So mm-hmm. my boy ain't said nothing because he's in there, too. If you really knew... We wouldn't be here right, right now. So suck my fucking cock. Let me go. Because I can't afford a lawyer. Oh, no. But I'm not talking to you anymore. Put me back in my cell or let me the fuck yeah. go, dude. Yeah, I got a... went um had an interesting time in my life a few years back. And I uh, had some allegations in which I luckily, not luckily, but rightfully beat all of them. Took me five years to go through it. Damn. And yeah. Yeah, it's just a really... How much money? Uh, a lot, 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 lot. It was 70, I had 72 different uh, charges filed against me. What'd you do, break into the Federal Reserve? I had a, I had a fuck. very, very angry ex-wife. Okay. Yeah. She, she got a really bad sinus problem. Was really kind of, she thought she could fix it with cocaine and other men. So that remedy didn't work. So I, me and my kids kind of went on about her day and... Um, yeah, she she was very bitter about her that, and I was I was too for a while. Wait, 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 wait. She was bitter about about the sinus problem, other men, or you leaving? I, th- I think um, no, I think the leaving was mutual. I think the whole circumstances, and then you know the kids coming with me, and you know all oh, that. Like that. I, yeah, yeah. And okay, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, and it you know it 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 was a really shit time, and I am not an angel. The shit, who is? But. It turned out for the best. That hard time was, you know, without that, I wouldn't have my wife today, number one. Love, I mean, my wife today, if you want to talk about a ride or die, definition. Yeah, you know, it's nice to have one. Absolute I definition. One I mean, yeah, me too. I, and, but without, without that absolute chaos, and then my wife, I wouldn't. I would not have the headspace to, to be pursuing my amps and stuff, you know, but... Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, I got a bunch of charges filed, and I pled not guilty. All of them. Didn't do it. Take me to court. Let's go. And uh, five years, and between my parents and me, and about six, close to about $60,000 later. Fuck. 
Jesus yeah, that's Christ. what I said. I didn't even get kissed for it. That's what it was even worse. You didn't get shit from it. I got fucked and didn't even get you, kissed. So you paid like 60 grand to prove your innocence. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. And this is at the point, dude, where I, I'm like, fuck America. I love you, Texas. But fuck the justice system, dude. Yeah, very much you so. Have to, it's not innocent until proven guilty. It's, it's not guilty, guilty until, until proven Well, it's innocent. not even that. It It's pay until you're proven right. innocent. Right. So I'm yeah. I, speaking of that guilty until proven innocent, and you're going to get me on a tangent. Anyways, I went... <laughs> I went had jury duty. I'm one of those people who never had it. I've always wanted it. I mean, there's just something, you know. <laughs> me, I'm probably going to go for a hot check, but, you know, me, I want like a triple homicide. Yeah, with yeah, a, yeah. Put a piece yeah. of shit in jail. Yeah, there. something. Yeah. So, I had this guy out there, and, you know, well, you know, he, he had a little messed up day. Shit happens. Um, and he's going to, you know, have his day in court. Caught red-handed. Horrible. I mean, like it, it's it's a deal. Yeah, baggy in hand. Type no, thing. I mean in the courtroom, pretty much. I mean, oh, you get shit. multiple, various, you know, previous charges, all that. Anyways, they said, uh, "Do you?" They asked all of us. You know, that you sit there and they ask you a question. You raise your hand if you have a problem with it. Do you think a person can be innocent without saying their side of the story? And I rose my hand. And they asked me, and I said, in this county where you are guilty until proven innocent? And the the, the DA said, that's fine, sir. I said, no, in this county when you are, you know, guilty until proven innocent, if you do not speak your mind and and have your day, you're going to jail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and at that point in time, about... You were asked to leave nicely. Uh, no, no. Here's your $7 check. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I think it's... Six dollars. No, no, man. It was a lot more than that. I think uh, whenever I went, it was that six was a bucks. payoff for them. Like, please stop talking like and don't say anything. I want to say it was like twenty bucks. Damn. Yeah. yeah oh, I yeah. Got, they gave I got the big six dollars for going. Yeah, see, yeah, I got like seven bucks, dude. Yeah, you got twenty. I, oh, I, I want to say it was like man. fifteen or twenty. Yeah, that was a payoff right there. Yeah, but yeah, yeah it, it was it was funny. Um, and when I said that, there was about four or five people just start and the the uh. The defense attorney, he was all smiling. Yeah, and that DA said, no, thank you. Yeah, of course, dude. Oh, Allison Mitchell, dude, she gave me two years. Yeah, she's, um, mm-hmm. yeah, um, mm-hmm. I, I have a, I have a saying, um, for people of, um, get people like that. Jesus loves them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I've seen her stumble to her car a few times, dude, at uh, the Pint and Barrel, dude, and, uh, Whoa. A bunch yeah. of them, dude. A bunch of them. Uh, well, that's you know there are sinus problems coming out of the bathroom, you know, and like <laughs> motherfuckers, y'all are locking people up for this shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. suck my cock. Dude. Yeah, that is fucked, dude. It, but that's great. how it is in small towns. It dude. is. But also, dude, you know, if you ever get the dirt, oh, then you're in the game. If you ever get dude. the in, that's right. You know, dude. Well, not what, uh, end, dude, what if was... you get the dirt, dude? Because let me tell you something, dude. Uh, Blackmail is a real thing in small towns. How do you think some of these people are where they sit? They got dirt on everybody. Everybody's got pictures or documents, and it's just this big circle. Of Charlie, shit. Charlie got it in. Which one? You know? Which well, Charlie? Uh, Charlie. Uh, <laughs> Hobo Charlie. My buddy no, Hobo Charlie. No. I think his name's Charlie. Um, the Roundhouse. <laughs> Yeah, I heard he was on the calendar, dude. Uh, I, I want to see that yeah. calendar. No, dude, he finger he finger blasted one of the uh, oh, oh the mayor, the gay yeah, mayor, right? Yeah, the yeah. Gay mayor, yeah, yeah, yeah. That. Yeah, he straight up fucking oh, went God. in hard, dude. You want to say it? No. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. She was asking for it. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, she was a lesbian. You well, you know, you gotta venture out the other side of the fence from time to time. Yeah, full public, you know. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a party? I thought it was funny how she just um, magically resigned when all the information comes out about yeah. the whole story. Yeah. It's a big shit show, dude. <laughs> and I love it. And see, and, but you know what? I would love. So if any of the y'all guys are listening out there in these offices, feel free to come on here and prove your. We need to get dude. Charlie on here, dude. Oh no. That who y'all you talking about four and y'all see Sean Ryan yeah four yeah. and five part episodes yeah. Charlie yeah. Golly. golly good dude love him to death Hell yeah. uh, that's the whole thing dude is like the old money's dying out dude everybody's that's kinda, good no no it is because everybody's yeah. kind of knowing like you're a fucking crooked you only help out your own no one's really fucking with you yeah. your 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 old money is running dry 
yeah, everybody's watching you and uh like with the podcast you know uh, that was one of my ideas is like get all these smaller businesses like people like us it's like we're the next we need some people just like in the government who come from nothing we need you know poor people exactly because poor yeah. people understand just like i think if, if, you're, if you're a president or in congress you have to be a combat veteran like you have seen and you've heard the crack, crack past your head you've, you agree. S- you've lost men or you've you know you've, you've led yes. men because then you're gonna be like yeah this whole situation with war this ain't this ain't good we're not yeah but not only that i mean with the the people in general you know if you've lost people and you've felt that you yeah, know? right you're gonna you're gonna understand it's yeah. like we only go if we, we got to. people out here fucking starving dude mm. you and, know, you, and you want to send billions we're 18 year old kids how, we're sending how, billions how much, to ukraine yeah dude. how much yeah. money did we yeah. send to freaking ukraine yeah oh 60 60 billion okay yeah, at this point? billion Maybe well more I, I, you know there was right after the hawaii fires which absolutely horrible okay absolutely mm. ho- i won thousand percent agree okay the money that we sent to ukraine could have not only housed and fed every single person that it would have rebuilt the state you're right no problem on top of that it would have taken care of the homelessness in the state of california period and no i'm not a california fan i have my own opinion that that. would that would uh that would uh uh Solved the uh, homeless problem in the whole country. Sixty billion. That means vets, yeah. houses. I didn't for know. Vets. Now, we're not talking about great billion. houses. We're talking about small yeah, houses. Thousand square foot. Our vets are taken care of. Uh, you, you, you put fit, their asses in apartments. Yeah. Yeah. You've. Yeah. Uh, you've. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like veteran communities. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Where they're all either like chill or crazy, but everybody knows they can look after yeah. each yeah. other. That's the last place you want to fucking break into or start some shit. Yeah. I'm not a veteran, <laughs> yeah. and I, I have every. Every single bit of respect. I don't care if no, you are one right, of the crazy dude. ones that came back. No, I believe you, if you, you earn the right to combat be crazy. veteran, yeah. you don't pay federal income tax. And you, you don't pay sales tax. You shouldn't you have pay to, property tax. You don't pay taxes. You That's shouldn't it, have dude. to. Yeah, one thousand percent. I'll agree. pay you shit. Oh, yeah. I do anyways. Right. And then what? You get fucked off. Yeah. You get fucked off. Like fuck the VA. Dude. You know, I, I know a guy. Not not gonna name names. I know a guy that went over there had a pretty rough time. Okay. Came back with more than a few scars and a couple less limbs. All right, this dude had to do. It. Think of a hardship you had to go through to get a GI loan, just to get him a place to live. You know, mm-hmm. and as far as help going and sitting at the VA, I've been with some friends of mine that gone and sat at the VA. All you're doing is taking a trip down to Temple and hoping you get to come through Waco and have a bite to eat on the way back. I mean, that's it's a yes, fuck. It's a joke. And that's that's our money, which we should be deciding where it fucking goes, dude. Yeah. And, and if more. you want me, my old lady says it all the time, but she's like, if you want me to pay my taxes, there should be a sheet. Like, uh, this is what I owe. This is what my check goes for. And I better get a fucking receipt. But no, 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 no. You got these fucking bureaucrats up there. Oh, we'll just give it to whoever. Right. It's like, motherfucker, this is taxation without representation. And the last time this happened, we fucking started a war. And only yeah. 3% of the colonists fought. Well, this is the what, thing is, we, is the shit out we, started a, in the world. we started a fucking war over tax, over fucking tea. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And like here 7%, we are. 7% I, I, I have a fucking up. house that I'm paying taxes on that I fucking own. That's outright. I'm, yeah, for the rest of your life, and yeah. if it's not put in some yep. type of trust, if you if you hand it down to your kids, they have to pay inheritance tax on everything. Yeah. I, and I, the I, fuck is that? I yeah. sold trailers for a while at a company, and I had this this guy. He was from Africa, somewhere in I think Ethiopia, but he was an actual prince. Okay, now the only reason he was a prince is because his dad you know, was King Naduku of some little tribe. And he killed a bunch of people to get there. I hope so. But anyways, he came here and um, I was talking to him and I sold him a trailer and he brought me cash. This dude said, he said, you know, America, the greatest country in the world. And it is. But he he brought something to me that I, I will forever remember. As Americans, we never truly own Anything. Nothing. Pay off your house today. Don't pay taxes in five years. Watch that sheriff come up. And another thing that absolutely eats me to the just core of my soul. 
I can walk into your shop and before I get there, change my address, all my driver's license to your shop. And you take a weekend off, I go in there, you can't kick me out. Mm -hmm. You got to go through the process. But if I'm having a hard time and they foreclose on my house, the sheriff can come knock on my door, take me, my two kids, and my wife with nothing but one bag a piece and it and there's it has it can't be like a trunk one bag a piece and you have to leave your property because you're being foreclosed on mm-hmm. that you know it's fucked. where and, and, and you know another thing yes the country is in a shambles but where we have to start is locally okay low helping out our economy yeah there's a lot of people in this town that are no good two fucks okay yeah. <laughs> but there's a lot of hard working and yeah they may be a little you know on the on the line but who ain't yeah hard working people that are struggling okay that 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 can't if they probably caught 100 breaks probably screwed off 100 breaks but you know right now okay i'm my wife and I and my two kids, we're living in a smaller house, okay? Um, I had a concrete slab, and I was fortunate enough to, with a 730 credit score, beg nine different companies and got one of them to refinance on my property and to, to build the house, okay? I had a company come in, do all the framing. They built me a shell, did the spray foam, and did everything else myself. But, with that refinance, same thing goes. I miss a payment. They don't care. I get kicked out. I get fired, okay, from the job that I was at like three months in, okay? I went and started up a small business, started doing construction, remodeling, and stuff like that, and I get a letter from the Aya, the Ara, and the S, who I love, love, don't audit me again, um, and they want to try to hit me up for all the unclaimed you know money that i was bringing in which i did not bring any money in um you're damn right never yeah, do no Broke it was a joke it was all charity work mm-hmm. anyways but um you know i was trying to feed my family you know trying to get us out of a house that had fallen down around us and put us in a good home not burden anybody you know with government grants or begging folks for money right. And they local legislation and our government does not care about people that do not pay X amount of taxes. They don't care about people that work hard every single day, you know. And it, it I mean, look at the grocery stores nowadays. You go into a grocery store, you know how much a pound of meat is right now? That's like what? Five to seven bucks for some ground meat. And you know what's crazy? The reason they're doing that is, and I'm a big believer in this, hunting and fishing has went down 25 to 30%, depending on which part of the state you are in. And in some places like Dallas and Houston and, and the outer lined areas, it's up to 50 to 60%. That's right. They don't worry about people poaching no more. You know, because back when I was a kid, you know, when I was a baby, my parents tell the story about I wouldn't eat nothing unless I was told it was deer meat. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. they went up back in the late 80s, early 90s when we had this inflation. what dad do? Dad went out the window with a gun, got some deer, brought it home, fed his family. We don't have to worry about that no more. So they're starving people out in the stores. trying to, And it's just, I told you I'd do tangents. Yeah, but I mean, it's 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 just forward. it's sad that no, the well, common folk can't get ahead no more. There is no more American dream. Well, there there is heaven. Look at all the kids that can't fucking hunt no more. That's right because We've lost it. You number, know what I mean? number one, their parents like me. I was about to say my kids hunt. That, I took mine the other day, dude. I don't hunt, but best believe I, I, I can get a rifle. Right, I can go out kill a deer. I can core that motherfucker. I'll teach my kids how to do it. This is how you do it. Do you want to or not? Right, that's up to you. You got to know how to do it. But you need to know how to do it. You know the shit hits yeah. the fan. And I and I don't get me wrong. I would much rather go bring in. You know what I'm saying like six, seven big old bass fish because these are a lot easier to clean than hucking. You know what I'm saying a right. hundred, 120 pound deer over the back of me right. in the freezing cold, dragging mm-hmm. it 300 yards, right. hoisting it, gutting it, quartering it. You know. 
Yeah. It's a harder process, but best believe I can do it. Right. And well, I'll be the best at it? Fuck no, but I'll get one. Now, I'm going to tell you what, me me and a, a cousin of mine, well, well, we're have been seriously doing the numbers on it, and I think we're going to do this. Um, we I've got a freezer I'm putting in the new house. He's got a freezer. We're going to buy a steer. Oh, you're damn right. And hang it up and clean a deer and clean a cow. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, no, well none of that steer. A uh, goat's great meat, man. A butcher, mm-hmm. you know, butcher steer. And, and if me and my cousin and, heck, even another person – were to go in and buy a steer and even have it butchered, we are still saving on mm-hmm. average about a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars per household. And yeah, it's a it's a large expense. You know, it's going to be two or three thousand dollars up front, but on the back end, I mean, and that's what times are coming to nowadays. And it's you know, and people didn't know. It's like I, I have a bunch of chickens. Uh, I I raised uh, ducks because it's like. You need to have those motherfuckers on hand. That's you right. Know, where you can just go out there and snag one up, dude, and you got dinner. Tonight. I'm in pro. You know, I ain't that far along yet, but I'm in process. Mm-hmm. I'm in process. My my wife and I, and and my goal is in the next two years, we're going to be self-sufficient. Yeah, Full my garden, old lady's, got, chickens, my little old lady's got a damn garden going. I don't fuck with it, thank God. Uh, but uh, she's got, you know, I just like mow it down, you know what I mean, keep that kind of stuff. It's a good garden. Uh, it'll be bigger next year, I'm sure. Just getting ready, dude. Right. Getting ready for the shit, because, gentlemen, it's about to happen. That's right. But and I don't think it'll be bad for us around here. You know what I mean? It, you'll, it, you'll have it's gangs. Trickles down. Within the first six months, there'll be a lot of dumb motherfuckers around here just laying in ditches inside the road. And you'll have, again, you'll have, uh, uh, we'll, we'll be going to the farmer's market, you know. You'll be bringing your goats. I'll have the steers, yeah. bullets, you know. But we'll all have rifles, sidearms, and you'll get the nod. That's right. But hey, like, we're cool. We're here to trade. Don't start no shit. Won't be no shit. But if there's shit, um, I'll fucking kill you. Reloading ammo, <laughs> you, you know, when it does hit the fan, mm-hmm. these dollar bills, they're going to be great, dude, I've been great butt paper. i with a uh, bow and arrow, dude. I've Reloading. Been sticks. Uh, ammunition is going to be current. Dude, I've been ordering sticks. Uh, I've been uh, collecting feathers. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Just ordering some flint rock or just, you know, replaceable, uh, you know, heads. Yep. Uh, broad heads. The old uh, triangular heads that they used in uh, the medieval times. Yep. They'll go through uh, plates. And they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've tried at least level three. I haven't gone up to five, but they'll go through three. Right. About this far. But that's still a pretty damn good stick. Oh, yeah. That's, that's enough to take you that's, take that's, you out of the game for a second, dude. And it don't come out And either. the thing about that is it's a whole lot quieter than a bang. Well, think about it, dude. You mm-hmm. could have a, you know, you could have a good platoon, dude, uh, the old blue helmets. Yep. Now, imagine you got 150 of your boys, dude, and you're all in the woods, dude, and you got that 60-pound pullback recurve, and you're just waiting. <laughs> and there's 100 of Dude. And then guess what we have now? We have military equipment. That's right. And now we use that next on the next people. And, and, and so you'll always have shit, uh, but uh, knowing the hard times come, honestly, I don't think anybody wants, because you got to understand, when this country goes down, the yeah. rest of the world, everybody's looking at America like, when are y'all going to do it? Right. When are y'all popping it off? Because right. once y'all pop it off and we know your government's not going to back up our government, we're fucking it up. Did you see that Netflix movie and had Julia Robertson? I can't remember what it's called. Um, it's like the basically what it was about was these this family they went out and to like a Airbnb and the world just stopped. Like the internet shut down. Oh there was a yeah, boat yeah. That, uh, 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 I know what you're talking about. I, uh, I forget the name. You know Obama's made that movie. Yes, they were the. That's what I was gonna say. They Damn. were. Dude, the Tesla cars was fucked me up, dude. The boats and airplanes yeah, crashing because all boy. the GPS is down. Because think, how many pilots yeah. know how to fly a plane? Like they know how to get it up there, they know how to get it down. But I mean, it's no. How many? How many sailors know how to navigate by stars? By stars. Yeah, that no, doesn't lost happen. It. There's few. Yeah, but most of it we've lost. Oh we? yeah. I mean, think about it, dude. I mean, if we got out right now, dude, you know, without. Cause I, dude, I've been on ritual and chamber and be like, "Hey, bro, where the fuck's the doc at?" Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. Cause that's a big motherfucker, and you're just like, "Uh, hold on." That's right, and that right there. <laughs> Go that way. Yeah, you know what I mean, motherfucker. You get out there on that ocean, dude. Could, could you imagine just from selling, old say, like from Puerto Rico to America? Hey, that's fucking scary. Yeah. Yeah. With I just wanted, sales. Yeah, with just sell. Yeah, now I want to do that, but let me Shit. tell you something, dude. I will have my map mapped out. I'm like, so we're riding the coastline <laughs> all the way to this motherfucker. <laughs> and it's a real short straight cross to fucking yeah. Florida. We can't see land. Get closer. Closer. Yeah, no, you're damn right. Tawakaro.
a word originating from the Caddo that once lived on this beautiful land we call home. It means bend in the river. But now we've come to know the word as the award-winning Texas bourbon. Distilled right here in Palestine, Texas. Like I say, my, my granddad was born in 1901. When my father was born, he was a month shy of being 61 years old. Yeah, that's because testosterone back in the day was a lot higher than it is today. Yeah, de- granddad was just throwing that hammer down. That's all it was. Yeah. But, yeah, right. uh, Dude, I feel like old men had, like, like our grandpas just had bigger swinging dicks than what we have nowadays. Too. I'm sure. I, it doesn't take much to beat that with me, so probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm the same thing. Cause I, <laughs> dude, I was like... Uh, I see. I was like 12, 13 one time, and I was bailing hay with my grandpa. Yeah. We used to get greasy and dirty from working on tractors. You know what I mean? And we'd leave grease stains in my grandma's bathtub. Oh, you know what I mean? She'd get fucking pissed, so she kicked us out. We had to shower outside under a tree, dude. And I seen this motherfucker's goddamn slong, dude. It was like a summer sausage just hanging there, dude. And I was looking at mine, and, you know, it's just like, dude. Uh, That'd be no Wayne to get smaller. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're damn right, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah, the boy had that but, dangle down. But, yeah, dude. No, I was like, what the fuck, dude? No wonder you so, had three kids back to back. From 1923 to 1930, my grandfather and his brother built a house in five saddle sheds. Now, the way that they built this house was the railroad, okay? You could, the Texas State Railroad, you could pay them, I think it was five cents to stop and you could get materials you you paid two and a half when they to pick up your material list two and a half to stop with the material well they lived off 84 they lived a mile off 84 and where the train stopped was two and a half miles it took them they would saddle up early in the morning and it would that was a day trip to go meet the train and come back well, they, um, they built these house out of sawmill slats, okay? True one inch by 12 inch. And, well, the way I did my roof in my house was is I went and took all of them slats down of the remaining buildings that were still left and pulled all the nails out, routed them, planed them, stained them, and stuck them in my roof, <clears throat> you know? But to, to think that me, it took me an hour to drive, you know, nine miles down 84 get a pickup load of wood and then bring it back and and those Mm -hmm. bastards they were hauling it with a you know donkey and a wagon and you know square nails that's that tells you how old that shit is square nails that's 50s Uh, no 40s 30s 1923 to 1930 is when they use the square nails no um that's when he did that i i don't know i think square nails went out in the 40s yeah so. No, the only reason they used square nails in the 50s was drywall, when drywall came to think. Have y'all seen that? I don't do TikTok. Don't believe in that it. That guy with the... With it, yeah, but I've yeah. seen that That's short. bad motherfucker. I just sheetrocked yeah. my house, and I have invented every curse word you could have fucking imagined for that bastard, because I... Not with knives and all... I can't yeah, he that. did that shit with like a little hatchet. Oh, I know. Yeah. Drywall. Yeah, drywall, yeah, drywall hammer. hammer. Yeah, that shit was crazy. Yeah. But... No, man, it's just, it's crazy, and, you know, it's people like us, you know, I feel like when I was a kid, the old people, and not 30s, 40s, but 60s, 70s, they made the world, and I feel that it's it's kind of turned more to where, you know, people our ages in our 30s and 40s, we are now making what the world is to be and I, and I think that everybody needs to really put that in perspective yeah yeah well you got people now that just don't care about anything and it's sad there's a difference you between know? not giving a fuck and not caring yeah and not caring is poison yeah yeah oh we just it, it's just it was made easy for us uh we just had parents thank god that you know pushed us out on our own and actually you know said hey figure it out uh these kids today there's no fucking way yeah, I feel them. like light shut off. They're fucked. Oh yeah, I feel like it's really going towards like Ready Player One type of living for yeah. people. You know how everybody's just stacked on top of each other. Nobody get, gives a fuck about anything anymore. Yeah. It's just all everybody's living like shit. Yeah, yeah. Ty Sheridan, and they're uh, just cool. Know, come on here, we want to interview. Yeah, yeah. 
What was that kid's name? Uh, what did he play? What's that character in Ray, uh, Wade R- Watts? Yeah, Wade Watts. If I'm, if I'm right. From Mud? No, 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 no. From uh, Ready Player One. I didn't see that. What? Dude, that, yeah, okay, you know, you know how Bruce Willis is obviously John McClane? Yes. Salone's obviously Rocky. You yes. Know, Arnold's yeah. obviously yeah, you know, yeah, the Terminator. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, uh, uh, Ty Sheridan's best character. To me, how I always see him is Wade Watts. If I'm remembering that character's name correctly from Ready Player One, he killed it. To me. Yeah. I'm, I'm right now. And they're supposed to be making it too. So, come on, Spielberg. Hurry the fuck up. Make it happen. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, I remember him as a Cyclops for X-Men. Mm, yeah, because yeah, I fucked with him. Uh, I was talking to Chase, his cousin. And I was like, "Bro, your cousin's on all these little kids' fucking underwear now." Best, like, best movie he did was Mud. Matthew McConaughey. I still haven't seen that. Oh, what? Yeah, that's well, his first happened. one too, right? Yeah, yeah it's bad. No, 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 not his first one. No, Mud. That was a second. One of Matthew McConaughey, Dallas Buyers Club, and Mud. It's a toss up. I mean, yeah. from McConaughey's best role. I think the first one that Ty did was called uh, The Tree of Life. And he was just, he was almost, he was almost like an extra. Wouldn't know him if I seen him. I'm going to watch Ready Player One now. You yeah. need to, dude. It's fucking dope. It's like, it's yeah. everything you hope GTA will be one day. You know what I mean, dude, it's just like, yeah, yeah. no, that would be tight. But could you imagine like the suits and actually? Well, I mean, that's what that's what uh, Elon uh, Musk is talking about making. Everybody loves Elon, dude. I'm, I'm on the fence about that son of a bitch, big dude. dude. Big fan, man. Uh, a lot Huge of people, but it's like it's like he almost just came out of nowhere, dude. What is what is he talking well, he's an about? Alien. Don't you know that? Well, I, I, some people are like he's an antichrist because he just arises through money. He doesn't and, have, and he's not. He doesn't start off in politics. But yeah. the thing, he doesn't have that much of a public figure to, to try yet. to do that. Not, not yet. yet. You're right. You're right. Would it be interesting to talk to? I just like to get him hammered. That's not hard. You know what have I mean? Have seen Rogan? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get yeah Rogan gets him pretty fucked up and asks him a bunch yeah, of questions. Always play a stock when he goes on Rogan. Yeah. Uh, like, the first time he went on, it tanked. <laughs> and I bought a bunch of it. And then it went back up in a week when everybody forgot about it. So I did the same thing the last time he went on and did well. So. Right on. Yeah. Well, I'm enough like, of the worldly bullshit. Yeah, dude. yeah. Let's get to what you do, dude. All back right. to 2024, dude. Yeah, so, that's that's what I like the best. So, man, here, here's my thing. Introduce yeah. us to some of your stuff. All right, so you I've gotta, got. You got to grab it. Yeah, no, I'm going no, no, to. no, you don't have to grab it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'll put it up on the side. Okay. That'll How work. are we gonna do that? Like while he's talking, it'll it'll come right here. Well, uh, anyways, yeah. so you got the um, the Aztec looking thing there. It's um, that's that's my twill. It's 25 watts, um, 25, 26. It's set up in a very simple platform. You've got, um, you know, two volumes and a tone. Um, it runs off two 6L6s, uh, tubes, old school tubes, man, just like yeah. back in the day. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab a couple tubes real quick. Give me one Isn't that uh, what's on your shirt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's uh, a guy that band member for the uh, Midnight River Choir. He helped me out with that. And uh, he did me a solid on it. I uh, had the idea. I just didn't have the hand to draw it. But these things right here. So wait, you can still order tubes? Oh, dude, yeah. What the? By the dozens, man. So I, um, what I did was, that's a, it's a 6L6, man. And that is see that thing. It's what makes the world go round. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know, this is going to sound fucked up, but you could definitely smoke meth out of this bulb. You know, I, um, I value them too much to try. You know what I'm saying? Though? That's beautiful, dude. I mean, that, I'm, you, you don't have to heat up the glass too much by, you know, going in and out. I don't smoke meth, but I know how to smoke meth. I've, I've heard about it. <laughs> um, I think that'd be kind of difficult, but, you know, it's, um, yeah. The thing about a tube is, is so uh, the way that so I, I have a distribution. I'm I'm a I'm a uh, I get a, dis, a distributor's discount, and there's a company out of Phoenix. They're called CE Distribution, and they sell everything to. No, please don't. You see me going <laughs> and cry. Um, they sell everything from like old, new, old stock parts to you know reman, you know remanufactured. Um, but I called them 
and I said, uh, I said, hey, I, I want a distributorship through y'all. And uh, they asked me to send them, you know, a business card, a tax ID, and all that. I sent them a flyer that I made um, on Microsoft Word. And this guy called me and he said, you know, I, I really, I'm calling to qualify you because I, as of right now, we're going to have to deny you a distributorship. And I said, I'm going to be real honest with you, man. I said, I thought of every lie I could think of to bullshit you into giving me this. I said, but here's the deal. I am a young guy who has a passion for this. I am trying to get started. Buying parts off the shelf is killing me. I said, you know, a, a set of tubes is ungodly. I need, I need some help. I said, am I an official store right now? No, I'm not. Will I meet your, you know, requirement for your orders a month? Probably not right now, but give me some time. And he said, well, you know, um, you, you don't qualify for what you applied for. We're going to give you our premium distributorship and uh, appreciate you being honest. Hell he had yeah. no way should have got given me that. But he did. And, you know, this right here is you buy a set of them and they're like $70, $80. Jesus. I, I get them for less than that. So, and it's by doing that. And the thing about me is, is I don't cripple my customers. Yes, you. everybody has to make markup. That's how you make money in a That's business. Right. But where you're paying $70, $80 for a set of these, if you get them through me and let me work on your stuff, I'm charging you just, you know, a little bit over cost. You take care of my shipping and my parts, and we work the rest out. Yeah. So, um, you know, if I become you know, the next Howard Dumble, you know, that's a little different. We'll, we'll talk on surprises in, but you mm -hmm. know, I, I do this because I love it. And, you know, I, I've got a deal. I've had artists to where, um, you know, I've actually went out to parking lots with my truck and a inverter off my cigarette lighter to hook up my soldering iron and my Variac and pulled amps out from under a bus and fixed them on the tailgate of my truck at seven o'clock in the morning. That's cool. Um, you know, I, I I offer different services with my amps. You know, you can buy like a plain black Tolex version of one of my amps, and it'll come, you know, with the basic features. Or I offer a deal to where you come, I will actually come to you. We will, I'll make the basic circuit, I'll open it up, and I will tune each piece in there to your playing style. You know, cool. you, an amp is kind of like a car. You know, you get in a 600 horsepower Challenger, and then you get in a 600 pound, you know, 600 horsepower Mustang. They're going to drive different. Every amp's the same way, but I'm the tuner that fits it to your hands. You know, it's like with my guitars. When I build you a guitar, I take measurements of your hands. I take pictures of your hands on the neck, and I build that instrument to your fingers, to your specific playing and you know a lot of i tried to base a lot of my stuff off like the these ones that you see here you know these are yes they're road worthy you can throw them out of a truck matter of fact the the cab on that brown one i, I took it to a guy one time trying to sell it, and he said well it's it sounds great but how durable is it and i pushed it off the table and it fell on the ground and um i mean it fell four three four feet you know and i picked it up put one of these little things in it and it played Hell yeah. and you know i sold him one and you know everybody when they see my when they see my gear they go oh i can't afford that yeah you can <laughs> let's talk about it you know i, I yeah i can build you a, a premium model or i can build you a base model um and you know a, a lot of stuff so I have a couple people that, uh, matter of fact, there's a guitar store in Galveston. I've done some work for this guy, and uh, what he does, he buys, and I have other customers that buy broken vintage gear, you know, and bring it to me. I restore it and get it back going, you know, and you find things at a garage sale that don't turn on, fucking buy it, you know. Um, I buy broke shit off eBay all the time. Uh -huh. And, and I fix it and restore it. But, you know, building is my passion. Each piece inside of those amps, 
a specifically pick, I hand solder it. There is no circuit board in there. It's no green board in there. It is hand wired. I build all my boards by hand. I wire each piece individually. Um, I do a, I basically, so amp like that runs off 125 watts. I hook it up to 150 watts uh, for about six hours and then I turn it down, or not volts, sorry, 150 volts for about six hours and then I turn it down to about 130. I burn them in. So you're not gonna you're not gonna break it. Right on. I, I I had a guy ask me one time. He said, "Well, what do your customers think about your amps?" I said, "After about the first week, I don't hear from them again." Well, what's it? Well, if the shit don't break, you ain't gotta call the person you bought it from. I mean, you go buy a vehicle. The only time you call the dealership is when something breaks. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've had other people, you know, hey, I got heard this from this person and. Um, and you know, I, 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 my, you know, I'm a firm believer in the wood makes the tone. Some people don't believe in that. With guitars, it kind of goes this way or the other way, but with cabinets and amplifiers, where that speaker is makes all the difference. I mean, that what that wood is made of is everything. You know. Um, from so for instance my stack here i've got black walnut on the sides it's real real dense so it it, it, it's a real straightforward sharp sound i got cedar on the top and bottom it's real airy it flexes and then i've got uh maple not birch but maple baffle where the speakers sit so it it has a rigid core but it's flexible and it my stuff my stuff sat in the heat today in my truck all day they don't they don't get burned up by trailers you know with your expensive gear and and all that so i all my face plates everything that you see besides the knobs and the switches i built um now the grate i bought the grate from lowe's cut it out but the face plates is a piece of plexiglass and stickers that i didn't cad i put them on there and i spray paint the back of them just like jim marshall used to do that's what a plexi marshall is is it's a plexiglass faceplate, <laughs> um, and you know, I, I every amp that I have comes with a secret. Okay, it's a special thing. Uh, for instance, the stack there. If you take the uh, bottom of the left side and the top of the right side, uh, and you plug them together, it gives it a crazy smooth, clean sound. If you go just in the bottom left. Um, it's every, it's the amp to its, you know, full peak. Um, and I, I give out typed manuals with my, with my amps. It's not just something I go figure it out Uh on the back of my combo there. I've got a switch in the back that turns the the circuit into a Marshall. You cannot tell the difference (laughs) between a blues breaker and, you know, a 60, you know, 1965 Marshall and that. Damn. And then I've got another switch in the back, which I call it a foos switch because, you know, like fuzz, jack white, okay, that real yeah. gnarly growling sound. I flip a switch in the back, and it puts a actual tone bender fuzz, which, um, you know, jumping jack flash, okay? Dun, dun, you know, that is a tone bender. Mm. Jack white, um, you know, icky thump, that, or that is a tone bender um you know just i i make sure and i build them to where when you buy that you don't need anything else but you also don't have to go hold on i gotta turn this pull this switch that and then it's what i want with my amps you put it where you want it and you use your volume on your guitar to do everything they're very very pedal friendly you know guitar pedals are where the money's at these days in this stuff. Um, I have a very deep respect for pedals. Will I ever build them? No. I repair vintage ones. Don't like doing it, but I do it. Um, but I build my amps to where you you don't need that unless you just absolutely want it. Now, everybody's going, okay, it's a guitar amp. It makes noise. Musicians go, oh, well, it's a tube and they're quirky and all that. Yeah, the ones from the stores are quirky, but 
I'm going to piss a lot of musicians off right now. And you should call me and we'll talk about it. And I'll under, help you understand. You can buy one of my amps and you'll know what I'm fixing to say is true. There is a thing called a Kemper Profiler. Okay. Satan himself built that piece of shit. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is a digital remake of anything. You go spend $2,000 and you can have a dinky amp or, you know, something that you would spend $100,000 buying. And, you know, the person down the street, they don't know the difference. A person that puts an instrument in his hand or, or somebody that just plays on the couch on the weekend, they can hear that Kemper through their their speakers. I mean, you go to record with something like a profiler, Okay. Yes, it's nice. You get to plug your little shit into the into the box, and they run it directly through the the you know the board. But do you think Led Zeppelin and that sound that you get, like you know, "Fool in the Rain," okay, that you don't get that sound? You think of you know, "Oh well," you don't get that pure sound. I mean, uh, let me ask you this, Trip. Tattoo machines, okay? Oh, yeah, they're. The rotaries or the old style? You know what I'm saying? That depends on what I'm trying to do. Uh, but uh, you're going to get a better punch with, uh, you know, traditional coil machines. Uh, I feel like you're going to get a softer shade. I could do more work with the new machines, but we were talking about 100, at this point, 20 years of technology, you know, right. goes into it. And they've tried to make you know, machines, you know, with a four millimeter stroke rotaries that pack the same, uh, the pack the same punch as a, a coil machine, but it's not like that. It just, it just, no, I mean, it gets close, but it just, it it's ain't, not even fucking it close. ain't there. I don't care. I, I don't use traditional machines anymore because I'm old and I have carpal tunnel. But, right. But uh, it's, it's not the if same. If I hit you with a nine round in the rotary machine, you're like, yeah, okay, that kind of hurts. Yeah. I hit you with a coil machine, I'm about to show you God. Yeah. And see, my deal is, is, you know, I always say like them profilers and helixes and it's like, it's like cheating on your girlfriend with your wife. I mean, it's just there's nothing natural about it. You know what I'm saying? It's it, but with a with two, okay? It's purity. It's tone. It's, it's well, they had to put a lot more love and, and thought into them because, you know, technology today, you know, I mean, everything comes from China and it's like mass right. producers. And you have a Kemper profiler that breaks? You just took $2,000 and you scratched your ass with it. That thing breaks? You give me a hundred bucks or less in 15 minutes and it's done. And the thing about a Kemper profiler is I don't care who you are. There will not be any kid in this generation go, my dad or my grandpa left me his Kemper. Do you know how many kids out there now or, or now, you know, older guys, thirties, forties, that's going, well, my grandpa, he, he left this old amp in the closet and I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a guy, perfect story. Guy works at the penitentiary. He likes buying old instruments. He found this instrument at an estate sale. He bought this amp for like a hundred bucks. Cause grandpa left it there. He brought it to me. It's product number 15 of a 1959 Fender Baseman. It's four, four numbers off the one that Jimi Hendrix did Voodoo Child with. Damn. I appraised it for insurance for thirty thousand fucking dollars. Jesus. And you know what? His kids is gonna have that. And you know what the dude does with it? He plays it at a church in Oakwood, cranked to ten, with it sitting behind <laughs> the baptistry and a quilt over it. Okay, it's. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, I'm surprised I don't hear it from my house in Tucker. But another guy in town goes sees this guy in Elkhart. He's remodeling a house. There's a bunch of junk guitars in the corner. The guy says, man, just come out here. He got four amps and five guitars. One of them is a 1965 Fender Deluxe Reverb. It's a $10,000 amp. Damn. Wouldn't come on. Guy didn't care. He gave him 500 bucks for all that shit. He threw all of it in the trash. I changed the fuse in that amp. That's a $10,000 amp. Jesus. You know, and it, it will, it, there's just something about things that last. You know, yeah, no, because again, it was made to last. That's right, and like these, you can put them out on the road, you can put them in a studio, and and they'll last. You know, and people say, "Oh, you're a boutique builder." Well, 
I might be, all right, you know, but I build equipment that lasts, that works, and that you thoroughly enjoy. People right. who you can buy yours, and, you know, saying uh, have something that lasts, or you can buy, you know, the new shit, and then and you I can, can say it. that old saying, oh, they don't make them like they used to. It's like, no, a few people do, but you can get, you know, something that's going to yeah. last, but you're going to pay the yeah, fucking money. I was going to ask you, um, with you know speakers and shit can you build something for um for like a a set like vocals and guitar yes um so i've built several um like Mm hi-fi uh record record amp like record player amps like an old uh, on the lines of a macintosh i have built one um preamp and I have modified multiple preamps to where um, they they take vocals and they're crisp. And that's I know it's just a hi-fi system. Microphones, you know, there's several microphones that use tubes in them. Yeah. Um, I've repaired multiples of those, but yeah, vocals and stuff. That okay, like an old Neve console. All right. Um, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Everybody knows Last Dance with Mary Jane. Everybody knows the song Breakdown. Okay, well, what most people don't know is is Nirvana, okay, teen, Smells Like Teen Spirit. They mm-hmm. came off the same board, and that pat, pat, that, that drum, that that comes from tube. You know, that comes, mm-hmm. the, the need board was tube. And yes, on your deal is I've... Um, I built a couple smaller things that are good acoustics yeah. that you can run a microphone in. Well, see, I asked because um, I'm about to uh, kind of start up a bar in Elkhart. Awesome. And it's, it doesn't have, you know, any. I want to be able to do like some acoustic playing. You yes. Know, with vocals and stuff. But I, it's a small fucking space. Right. It's only going to be like a 50 people. Now, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you for something like that. Um, I can build you whatever you want, mm-hmm. but for something like that, you know, they, they make good all around systems. Now I build, what I build for is for the most part, an actual band setup. Mm-hmm. And like, for instance, with, with a combo there and, and with my, my stack, you know, I, I have an attenuator on it where you can dial it from a half a watt to 25 watts or in the combo it's it can dial and it's not so most amps they have like a click where you go one watt five watt no mine is on a potentiometer to where if you're going to go play some small place like you Mm -hmm. you can dial it down to half a watt you go play somewhere like the rodeo arena you can turn it up full blast and and it'll hang well i like i like the way that everything looks uh like mine, it's gonna be like uh, walking into an old tavern. So, you know, so another thing I do, don't do this a lot, but I, I do it quite often. Um, building boxes and cabinets to go around that, you know, like uh, you have an old radio up here on your shelf. Yeah, I've done three or four of those to where I've gutted them and put a guitar amp in it, and people have it on. Yeah, the that shelves. was the that was the first one that uh, you showed me. It was a little. A little radio, yeah, that, that you turn into an amp, yeah, yeah, yeah. super cool. I've, I've I've done several of those, and um, you know, the thing about me with this gear is, is like I, I got two kids, I got a wife. There comes a point in time where you have to set your priorities. Okay, I have a saying in my house. I'm a kid. So my, my kids have to be adults because children can't raise children. <laughs> but I have to be responsible. And this is my outlet to it's, it's freedom. You know, when yeah. I'm under that soldering iron and I know even if it's just something for me, you know, it's when I'm under that soldering iron, there's n- nobody. And if you know who they if you know somebody that can please introduce me to them so I can learn. There's nobody going to do a better job at what I do than me. I mean, there are there guys out there? Yes, there's a guy named Bob Jika who I would absolutely love to meet. He's a fucking genius. Uh, Howard Dumble, God rest his soul. But 
anywhere around here, if you do know somebody better, please, I'm not being arrogant or nothing, introduce me to that person so I can learn. Because, you know, I will never stop learning on this stuff. I never want to stop learning on this stuff. I am a book junkie. I read constantly. Oh, yeah. Um, whether it be about history or, or this stuff or, you know, whatever. I'm always, you know, one thing about me is, I, and I tell my kids this and I tell my wife this, the minute that a person stops seeking knowledge in everything that they do is the minute they, they die. Now, whether you go get in a box or in the ground, or you go sit on your recliner and turn on your television, the minute that you stop seeking knowledge in everything that you do, you're, you're just you're basically dead. And there's no need and no excuse for ignorance anymore in this world mm -hmm. because we carry a library in our pockets. You know, used to you had to go to the, get you know go to the library, pull out the index card, and go find it. You don't do that no more. You know, and just like at the library, you can find bullshit information all day but if you take the time it doesn't take long to find good pertinent sure. information and that you know so that's that's what i do you know and it, it's it's Hell something yeah. that I, I i truly seek out and will i be a millionaire off this sure after this podcast somebody's gonna buy about 40 <laughs> 40 or 50 thousand apps that'd be Hell great yeah. but uh, yeah probably not but but i will tell you one thing whether you come get one from me tomorrow or you borrow one of mine that I built a year ago, or you come get one in 10 years, if it's not the best that you've ever played, give me the time and the respect for that conversation so I know how to make it better. Hell yeah. And that, again, that's just what I'm about, man. I mean, I build all my cables that come out of my amp. You know, your cable, the, the it's just like anything. The weakest link in your car is the part that's fixed to go out. Mm -hmm. So from my cables... To my my you know my wood all of that I I, I do it all I, I hand build everything. Hell yeah, that's awesome, man. Well, let's check them out. All yeah, right. dude, I'm down. Okay. We appreciate you coming on. Hey, dude. hey, gentlemen, yeah. I want to tell y'all, I really appreciate y'all reaching yeah. out to me, and letting me come on here. No, dude, we appreciate you, dude. Um, Thanks for being a yeah. guest. I mean, I, I it's been fun. I've been I, I watch all your shit. And hell yeah, y'all crack me up, and I, uh, means a lot to me. Yeah, yeah Thanks, we appreciate you. you coming on and share us what you got, yeah. man. And uh, it, you mind if I tell how to get a hold of me? No, I can tell. Yeah, dude, go for it. So you can forward. find me at, um, it's just k.amp, camp, Killian Amplifications. You type that in Facebook or you type that in Instagram. It's welcome to the camp. You'll find me. Um, shoot me an email. All my information's on there. Uh, welcome to the camp at outlook.com. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not hard to find. So, uh, get a hold of me. Hell yeah. I appreciate it. Hell yeah. Well, thanks again, brother. Oh, thank y'all. Cut.